One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. How much does it actually cost to run a podcast? This is something that I see asked a lot is like, well, how much should I budget for? How much is this going to cost me? Do I need to have a side job just to support my podcast? Like how much should I realistically budget for my podcast? So that's what we're going to dig into today. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Prophet, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Because if you've been thinking about creating a podcast for a while, well, I'm so glad you found this show. Think of this as the shortcut slash time-saving version of searching Google and YouTube for hours and hours trying to figure out the world of podcasting. Trust me, as a busy mama of three, I get it. You don't have a lot of time to be spent or wasted, I should say, searching the web, trying to find all the right ideas and all the amazing things that are out there and you just end up overwhelmed. Trust me, I've been there, done that, took home the souvenir. But this podcast is going to help you in practical ways because twice a week we'll be delivering episodes that are going to give you steps to help you create a podcast your audience can't wait to listen to. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, y'all. So we are here today to talk about how much it costs to podcast And I have some amazing news to share with you. If you are brand new to me and to this podcast, then welcome. I am so happy that you're here. But I wanted to share with you my ability. Is ability the right word? I I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of a fancy way to say it, but I'm just going to tell it like it is. I'm very cheap. I used to call myself frugal, but... I feel like that's just a fancy word, and I don't like to use a lot of fancy words, so I'm just going to say I'm cheap, guys. I'm cheap. 
I like to get stuff for free. I like to try things out on trial basis. And I like to not spend a lot of money. And my husband loves this about me. <laughs> he actually, it's so funny, y'all. Like, he almost begs me to go shopping for myself. And ladies, I know you're probably thinking, Crystal, who are you? Like, where where did you come from? Or maybe if you're a guy listening to this, you're just like, why are there not more women that don't care about shopping as much? But I just... I really don't. It's not that I don't like to shop. It's just that I am just very conscious of where my money goes. And I know it has everything to do with um, my husband and I took Financial Peace University. If you don't know what that is, look up Dave Ramsey and Financial Peace University. And oh my gosh, it's life changing. It is amazing. So I am very conscious of my budget, and how we spend our money. So that's why I wanted to talk about podcast equipment and all the expenses that go into podcasting. So if you're brand new to it, I want you to know this is what you can plan to spend every single month. But then I also have some extra stuff for those of you who have been podcasting for a while and you're like, yeah, I have a little bit of extra money left over from the holidays or I have, you know, someone gave you some money or you have an extra bonus that you're like, "Ah, I really want to work on my podcast, but I don't know where to spend this. So we're going to cover that as well. So first of all, I'm going to talk to my brand new podcasters, what you can expect. So I have fantastic news to share with you. Like I said, I got started for $30. That is how much it cost me the first three months of my podcast. It cost me $30 to get started. And it's funny because in hindsight, I'm looking back and I'm like, I probably should have, you know, tried more in the beginning with my equipment and everything. But y'all, I mean, I, I didn't have any intention of being a podcast educator when I started podcasting. Okay. My podcast was about something totally different than what it is today. I was just looking for another way to express myself creatively and a way for me to not let my ma- my main, my mom brain, I just like totally shoved two words together. I know I do that a lot, but mom and brain got shoved together. So my main, <laughs> my mom brain, I didn't want it to go to mush. So I was looking for something to do. And that's when I decided to start podcasting. And I knew going into it that I did not want to buy some super fancy equipment that I knew nothing about. So I hopped on the old Amazon and I found a USB microphone that I still have and I still use to this day for $21. $21 microphone. That is how much it cost me to get started. And then I saw the pop filters, like it was one of those, um, you know, at, at the bottom of Amazon, well, they'll, they'll have like people also bought together and they'll have like two or three other things. And there was a pop filter that popped up. And so I was like, oh, I've seen like people that podcast, you know, they have pictures of those. Maybe that's important. Maybe I should get a pop filter. So I bought a pop filter too. And that was around $8. So that is how I got started for $30 with this podcast. And I'm just here to tell you that you don't have to spend a ton of money. You do not. If you listen to um, my episode with Ray, we talked about different types of microphones that you can get. And there were some affordable options. They were still on the higher quality side, but... um, There was at least, uh, I know he mentioned the Blue Yeti, and that is a microphone that I have as well. And you don't have to break the bank. That one is around $100. And to be honest, I don't even suggest that you go any higher than that. There's some affordable ones um, that you can get for around $60 to $70, but you do not have to break the bank. So if you're going into this thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to spend hundreds of dollars on just a microphone, and then I don't even know what to get besides, no. If you are totally lost, totally confused, don't go throwing money at that. Just buy a cheap microphone to get you started, and you can always upgrade later. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to talk about is equipment, and that is a one-time purchase. So once you have your equipment, 
essentially, unless you want to upgrade in the future, that's done. That's a one-time payment, okay? The next thing is your hosting site. This is a monthly expense that you will have as long as you want to have all of your podcast episodes showing up in all the platforms where, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all those places. As long as you want your podcast out in the world, you will have to pay for a hosting site. So now y'all know this. I've told you this before. I love Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout has been amazing. And the reason why I was able to get started for $30 with my podcast is because Buzzsprout offers a 90-day free trial. So I'm going to link to that in the show notes where you can go try out Buzzsprout for free for 90 days because that's really what solidified my relationship that I have with them today because I've used them from the very beginning I trust them and they just have the best customer support, best customer service. And their Facebook community, y'all, is thebomb.com. I love the Buzzsprout community because I can hop in there and ask questions and I can, you know, um, you can go to like the search bar and type in, you know, like if you have a question about something, that is where I get a lot of the equipment recommendations when people ask me because I only know what I know about the equipment that I've used. I, I don't recommend things that I haven't personally used or has not been recommended by someone I trust in that Buzzsprout group. So go, go join their Facebook group. I'm going to link to it in the show notes. But their hosting services cost, after you're done with the 90-day trial, they cost anywhere from $12 to $24. Y'all, $12 a month to run your podcast or $24 a month to run your podcast. Like that is, you know, a few trips to Starbucks that you could give up and make some coffee at home if you're strapped for cash. Or, I mean, there's just so many ways that you can totally use $12 a month for your podcast. So it's not super expensive to have your podcast and host it. And like I said, I got started for $30, $30. That is all I spent. So, I, and the thing is, is that you can only go up from there. So if you want to invest in the best possible equipment and you just want to go out of the gate with the best sound, the best quality, like everything, that's fantastic. I think that you should do that. But for those of you that are strapped, you're on a super, super tight budget. I just wanted you to know that it's totally doable. It is totally doable to be able to have a podcast and run it every single month because it's not that expensive. It's actually why I love the platform because it does not cost a lot to podcast. So now that we've covered the basics, that is literally, you know, the two things that you can expect to pay for no matter what level of podcast that you're at. You're always going to have to have some sort of microphone and a hosting service. Now, everything I talk about next is upgrade. These are optional. These are not things that you have to have even in the first six months of having your podcast, but these are things that I think can help you level up and make you look legit, professional, super like put together and polished. And I do recommend these to my students and my clients because I think that you're audience has an overall better experience when you have some of these things. So the first thing is a website. If you can afford it, I believe that you should have a custom website for your podcast. Now, another cool thing about Buzzsprout is when you get started, you have automatically a Buzzsprout website. Like that is part of their package is they provide that to you within their package. I was going to say it's free, but I mean, you're paying for their services. It's just something that they include in their plans is you have your podcast hosted on a website and you can always change the URL. Um, You know, you could use bit.ly or pretty links or something else like that to make it a shorter URL um, if you want it to be something different. But you have a website with Buzzsprout. So I think that that's fantastic. Or If you have an existing website and you want to just point a page to that Buzzsprout, like all of your episodes are hosted there, 
that's an option too. So there are multiple ways, and I'm not going to get all techy and geeky, geeky, I can't even say that, geeky with you here today about websites, but if you do have a little extra disposable income that you can put towards your podcast, that is where I think you should spend it. I think that you should spend it before you start upgrading your equipment and you spend thousands of dollars in a studio or anything like that, you need a website. You need a place where you can send people to. And there's a lot of other behind the scenes reasons why I believe you should have a website, but just know that it's something that you should concentrate on to as you start building your show and you start getting bigger and bringing on bigger guests and you have a bigger audience. I want you to have a website. It's way it's another way for people to see you and know you and like you and trust you and that's just going to help them say, "Man, this chick or this dude has an awesome podcast and someone wants to go learn about it." You can say, "Oh, you can go to their website, check out everything that they have." So, that's the first thing. And then the next thing that you can consider is merchandise or inventory. So, Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. I was kind of hesitant to even talk about this one, but I know that this question gets asked a lot. So I thought I would talk about it, even though I don't have firsthand experience with having merchandise and inventory for this podcast. The reason why I wanted to bring it up is because this could be an additional cost. Yes, it could be a moneymaker, but it could also be a cost to you if you're hanging on to inventory and no one's buying it. So if you know like it's a for surefire thing that people want your merchandise and they want to see you create a product, they want to see you create something for them, then by all means, I think that's fantastic. You know you're going to make money. But if it's something that you're a little iffy on and you're not sure if people are actually going to buy it, like I've seen people make stickers and t-shirts and coffee mugs and all these things for their podcast, then they're like, oh, I have you know, a few hundred dollars worth of inventory just sitting at my house, I'm probably just going to give it away. It kind of makes me cringe a little bit because again, again, going back to the cheapness, I'm like, oh my gosh, like you're throwing money down the drain when you do that. So that's just some, something to consider. You can invest in doing merchandise and having inventory and everything for your podcast that could be an additional cost, but I don't think that it's something that you should jump into within the first six months or even the first year of your podcast. So that's my two cents on that. Um, the next thing, the next place where you could spend money with your podcast is upgrading your equipment. So if you've been doing this for a while, um, I'll give you a few examples of how I've, I've upgraded my equipment. So I started off with my $21 microphone. From there, and this is funny, this goes back to me being cheap, I got a $100 Amazon gift card from um from Amy Porterfield, it was this fun giveaway that she did in one of her Facebook groups. And I, I got a $100 gift card. And I told my husband, I just looked at him. You know him, he's like uh, looking at, you know, the next cool tech gadgets. He's totally into technology and he loves all kinds of fun things. And so I think he has like three pairs of wireless headphones. Y'all don't tell him I said that. Like Bluetooth ones. He has a Sony pair and he's looking at AirPods. He's looking at all these like cool tech things. And so I got a hundred dollar gift card and he actually got one too. And so he was looking at all the, all the cool things he can get me immediately. I was like, podcast mic. That's exactly what I want to do. Cause I was hesitant to upgrade. Cause I was like, I don't know if I want to spend the money, but then like That was out of the question for me because all of a sudden I have this Amazon gift card. I was like, done. That's exactly what I'm going to do with this. So I upgraded to my Blue Yeti, which I still have. And then I have my Tascam digital recorder 
that is what I'm recording this episode on right now. I have my Tascam recorder, which ran me, I want to say it was around $240. And I waited until I had brought in some income in my business before I started investing in upgrading my equipment. So again, going back to, I don't think that you should start off, especially with a portable recorder, if you don't know how to use it. I have had experience with one of these before, and I knew that it could solve a lot of my problems with recording in my closet. (laughs) And um, one of the next things I'm going to be upgrading is my soundproofing and doing all that stuff. But I was taking my laptop and taking my Blue Yeti into my closet to record. And y'all, there was one day where I actually, I, oh, I don't want to say it, but it's bad. I, I dropped my Blue Yeti and I was so afraid. And that actually, I haven't been able to use it recently. And I think that that might be what happened to it. But <laughs> I knew that I wanted something that was more portable. And I can take this recorder with me on the road. If we go traveling, I can take it. Um, I actually, whenever I did my interview with Melanie, from the DIY marketing school, that was the first time I'd ever used this. And we did an in-person interview and it sounded fantastic. So if that is something that you're thinking about doing for your podcast, then I highly recommend a portable recorder. You can do uh, the Tascam DR40X. There's the Zoom H6 is another um, highly recommended one. But yeah, I just, it's another cool way to upgrade your equipment if and when you get to that point. And then the last thing I want to talk about, uh, a thing to consider investing in for your podcast is interview platforms. So there are a few different options when it comes to interviewing, and I haven't been interviewing as much as I did when I first started the podcast. I was doing interviews almost every single episode, and then I quit for a long time simply because I had an issue with Skype. And I was, I lost two incredible interviews. Like it still makes me so sad that I don't have them. One of them was with a good friend of mine. um, And we had so many great conversations and we talked about memories and all these fun things. And then I go to listen to it and it totally messed up and it did not work. So um, I have since switched to another platform that I use that it is free, but If you are really serious about having a strictly interview or mostly interview podcast, then I would look into um, some of the recommended platforms that you will have to pay for, but again, it doesn't come with a high sticker price. It's not like it's $200 a month or anything. I want to say most of them are under $50 a month to use these. And um, I'm going to link to a great Buzzsprout article that talks about the different platforms you can use. But I know uh, Zencaster, Squadcast, and I'm blanking on what the other one is um, that they recommend. But those are ones that, that were made specifically for podcasters. I've used Zoom for a long time. I have the free version of Zoom. And that's worked great. But that was really created for meetings, like online virtual meetings for coaches and clients and people that do consultations. So it wasn't specifically created for podcasters, whereas these other paid platforms were created to capture the best sounding audio quality that you can. So if that's something that you're looking into, go check out the show notes at crystalprofit.com slash episode 113. And I'm going to link up to everything that we talked about here today, but especially go check that out because I'm going to look into using one of these platforms in the coming year because I think that um, it's time. It's time for me to upgrade some of the things that I've done with this podcast, and I'm really looking forward to some of the cool things that are coming up in the future. We have the Spark Christian Podcast Conference. It's coming up in February, and I'm so pumped up. Oh my gosh, y'all. Misty is creating such a fantastic event that we'll talk about um, coming up in the next few weeks, but I'm super jazzed for that. So if you're in the Houston area or you live in Texas or you just want to come to a podcast conference, then this is the one that you should look into. I'm going to link to the information in that in the show notes, but that's all I have for y'all today. So those are the ways that 
you can spend money with your podcast or you can be cheap like me and do it the super frugal way as long as you can. And I'm good with either one. I'm not going to tell you, you got to go spend hundreds of dollars on all of your equipment because you're listening to this podcast that was created with a $30 microphone or I spent $30 in total, I want to say for the first year. I spent an entire year with my $20 mic before I upgraded, okay? So don't think you got to break the bank in order to podcast. I want you to understand that this is a super affordable platform, and I want you to join us. If you have not launched your podcast, tell me what's holding you back. Let me know. You can always shoot me an email at crystal at crystalprofit.com, and I'd be happy to chat with you on what's holding you back from launching your podcast. But that does it for today. So if you are brand new to the show, welcome. I am so happy that you joined us. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And if you would, guys, this would help me so much. Take a screenshot wherever you're listening to this and share it out on social media. I'm at Crystal Prophet TX on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, and I would just love to hear what you have to say. Tell me what your biggest takeaway was and make sure that you tag me and I can share it out to the rest of our audience. Make sure that you check out the show notes. Again, it's at crystalprofit.com slash episode 113. Sign up for the free five-day Create Your Podcast Bootcamp if you haven't already. That's at crystalprofit.com slash podcast bootcamp. And remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.